is uh, you know it's a good introduction of this uh, whatever we're going to say here. But uh, go, I'm going to go quickly to just a background, and then I'm going to ask you a lot of questions today. Um, digital I, ICT. I mean, put it in digital because it's very important the digital part for us. ICTs could be based on paper, you know, information communication. No. So there is part of practical everything we do today. Um, it's not just part, but it's transforming things that we're doing today, like banking, you know, business, and so forth. Um, there was like management, even our social relationships. So these things are changing because we're incorporating technology into them. So we can say that probably uh, part of the society today is into the is digital includes and living in what we call the digital age. Um, you know, I'm saying part because there are some, you know, uh, of activities that still, you know, not uh, totally dependent <coughs> on technology. So the thing that's really interesting is that as we use this technology, it's changing the way of, you know, not doing things, but the way that we're thinking about things. So it's not just a, a resource, a, a uh, another tool that we have, but it's becoming like a language that we, we think and we structuring our, our way of doing things. So before you do things... Can you give an example? Uh, for example, uh, before you, uh, say that you, you think in buying something, before you... I would go to different stores. Now I go into Amazon, and you know, I, I think with with this kind of uh, available stuff that we have in order to, you know, make everything a little bit easier and faster and better and so forth. You're thinking like a man because I notice something very important. I'm not the only one who's noticed that. And I go into a store, or in I was looking for something specific. Yeah. My wife, uh, yeah. So this is a different styles of buying. Well, I'm like you. I go to a store because I want to buy eggs. Yeah, My wife goes around yeah, exactly. and she <laughs> leaves the <laughs> store with something that was not yeah, supposed. Yeah. So you're taking away from them the pleasure of seeing what's there. And we are in touch Well, probably you do that in a network. You go to a store, you know, Amazon tells you, oh, there is something new, and you, you go yeah, into that direction. Different styles. No, it means that you might be giving something important up. Probably it's important to us, but for example, to my wife, this is a waste of, you know, you not take advantage of the store. No, no, I'm just saying, for women, taking away utility of going to the store, touching the stuff, and, you know. Martin, you let it in three minutes in yet. Just let him go. He's not even three minutes in yet. Well, this is, this is the challenge. How we behave and how we do action in the digital way. This is what we have. So, uh, the problem that's more and more we are at mercy of this artificial intelligence. We have a lot of stuff doing about cars, and I see a lot of propaganda on it. I'm surprised to see how much they talk about selling cars here on TV. And you know, some of this stuff is really interesting. Everybody laughs because the car can stop now, can park by itself, and then we have things like this. And you know, this is not totally, you know, Proof and we're going to have a lot of problem about uh, using technology. So the question is whether people are aware of what they do and what they, how they use this uh, this technology and how the technology works. Um, for example, we're doing a lot of stuff in new, new Facebook, Instagram, etc. And I don't know if you know about this book here. It's very interesting. This is a, you can download this book. And he's talked about things like this, you know, like uh, we think the human condition and public versus private. And so we're doing stuff today that we are very, very much monitored, controlled by all these, you know, big companies 
grabbing this data and working with this data, and people are not aware of, you know, they are being used that way. So, um, very interesting book, very interesting to read and find. You're going to be scared when you read this stuff, you're going to be really uh, surprised. I'm scared of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what's happening in this country, in a lot of countries, they are including one topic in the curriculum. It's called ICT and teaching about ICT or programming or something. And, you know, I don't think that's how uh, these things should be approached. These things should be approached in terms of including technology into whatever subjects that we have. And then by using the stuff, we can talk to the students about, you know, what are you doing? How are you looking for stuff? How are you accessing this information? Where did you go? What did you get? And so forth. So they can learn and be aware a little bit about you know, what technology is doing for them. So I'm going to do this, you know, taking you know, what Paul mentioned, a little bit of mathematics and see how we can do this stuff. I'm going to do two things. One is local, that's similar puppet, as Paul mentioned. And another one is going to be simulation. So I'm going to go into a I'm using here Snap. Snap is like Scratch, but it's from Berkeley to honor Rebecca. <laughs> so this is a uh, you know it's, it's like it's like a, uh, it's, uh, uh, Scratch. Who knows? Everybody's familiar with Scratch. So you can look like you can do things like this. For example, you can move this object like hundred steps. Like that, I can turn to the right. I can move again. My question is, how can we make a square? What do we have to do now to make a square? Turn 90 degrees. Here, and then here. Turn again. And so forth. Square. How can we do a triangle, a collateral triangle? 60 degrees. Oops, sorry. Is that a triangle? I'm going to do it again. How do you figure out? <laughs> and then I can do this. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I just want to point out that when teachers do this in classrooms, this thing that you just, some of you did very quickly about 60 versus 120, is you know becomes a classroom discussion topic. So they say, oh, why is it 60 and not 120? Then they have to think about complementary uh, angles and what you know what what is an angle and what is an internal external angle. So it's it's a context that makes talking about angles meaningful because you want to do something, and for that it's kind of counterintuitive in a way that you have to turn 120 instead of. You know. But then when you tell kids, okay. So simulate it with your body, like go forward and now think about what you have to do to do this. So would you turn 60 or 120? And then they say, oh, I have to turn all the way there. So that's the thing that I was talking about, that it's when you make it closer to kids' experiences and they can simulate it with their own body, you know, geometry becomes something that's closer to they, their, their lives. So now we, we can use for us going to repeat times <coughs> here. That's what we did exactly. So suppose I want to do a pentagon five. How much do I have to turn? <coughs> I'm going to do a pentagon five sides. Means of one hundred and two. 
102. 108. 108. 108. 108. 108. And uh, should be five sides, right? Seven children. Seven children. How did you figure out? I Good. If we want to make like a, a octagon, so it's going to be forty five. I have to decrease this. Okay? Now, I'm going to do a circle. How can we do a circle? I would say do one degree, 360 times. One degree? It won't be a circle. It will be quite a circle. Yeah. The small steps. Small steps, right? Yep. <laughs> Two big steps. Uh, let's put one. So Okay, is this a circle? Not quite. What is that? Uh, it's made of little little angles, yeah. and a circle has no. It looks like a circle, right? But in fact, is a a figure is a polygon with three hundred sixty sides. So now look, we 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 are the like working with calculus now. Remember this limit of something going to zero, blah, blah. So what is a circle? The circle here is a polygon when the number of sides go to infinity, the angle goes to zero, and the side goes to zero. Okay? So, you know, just going to the square to something that's very, very complicated that we use in calculus but probably never saw this limit working for us. They talk about it, you know, we have to make this thing in our head, but we don't see it. And here, very, very fast, we're able to see how this thing works. Yeah, I, kind of okay. So, uh, so I think this is, you know, one, one point I was making before is that uh, this, this tool or this new medium makes something that was very hard and complicated to do on pen and paper like suddenly obvious, and yeah, well, a circle, and then you can ask kids, okay, how would you make it an even more perfect circle? Then they would say, well, maybe repeat like, you know, 360,000 times and move like 0 0.01 and turn 0 0.01 and all that. So, I mean, you can easily see that, you know, a fifth grader could, you know, start reasoning about infinitesimals and in a way that's not just this is an infinitesimal and now I want you to you know do a test but in a way that's very intuitive and it's very understandable so I, I think it's a good example of how you know computational media can change not just uh, you know how we learn but also give new tools for you to reason about things but you know you can also imagine that if you wanted to do this on paper Study these infinitesimals on paper, it would take like you know two hours just to draw the 360 and you have to measure it with a ruler. So it's just not possible to do in a classroom, right? But with, with this tool, you can. Yeah, just, mm.
And, and also, like, you, after, if you are in differential geometry, this is the definition of a circle. It's a, a figure where you have this infinitesimal size, you know, so it's a valid mathematical definition of a uh, circle. Now, this is very similar to that one. We have a 4, is variable for 1 to 200. You <coughs> move, like the first time you move 1 and turn 92. Second time you go, I, uh, the, the variable i is going to be 2, you move 2 and turn 92, and so forth. Can you guess or can you tell me which figure this thing is going to draw? Spiral. Spiral. So this is something that's very interesting that something emerged from the figure that I was not, I didn't draw this, this spiral, okay? So I'm going to leave this stuff and go to um, my, my simulation. I don't know here, but in Brazil, we spend like a semester doing this. How is the house here? How much do you go into the second degree equation to solve this equation here? It's a, it's a big thing? No. Yeah. yeah? yeah. 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 So, what kind of thing you do with this here? You like factor it, you know, like what if A is 2 and B is like 6 and C is 3, whatever, or that's like, what are the roots and how do you graph it? The roots. Mm -hmm. To solve the equation, you use the Pascal, right? Yeah. You find x1 and x2. You do the graphic ones. Very complicated. So, I don't know. Do you know this uh, site here? We're going to the site. This is a very interesting simulation site going by the Colorado people. Very, very good. Um, we have tons of stuff here, it's amazing. We're going to math. You see, we have all of this stuff. And I'm going to do the graph for the equation, second degree equation. You have a material for teachers, you have this translating all these languages, even in Portuguese from Brazil. Material for students, teachers, and so forth. We're going to run this. So, if I move this way, I get, you know, a What, what a C positive does to the equation and the negative one does to the equation. If I turn B, I have a first degree equation and I see what you know the B negative does and the B positive does. And then I see what the A positive does and the A negative does. Okay? So as we're saying, you know, if we you know, we have to find what you know what these arguments, you know, what they do to the equation, we do a lot of exercise in pace and paper to find out about this. But did I solve the equation? Do I know the value of this? You're using the equation, you're showing that the equation represents yeah. various coefficients. Shapes. Yeah. 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 But I haven't solved it. So this is the interesting. When you work with the simulation, you have to be intelligent. How do you do it? Because if you solve everything, if you give the answer, also the x1 and x2 here, the kid doesn't have to do anything. So now for me to solve this, I need to go to Basker. Also, I want to find out, you know, how much is this? Do I know the scale here? How can I figure out the scale? What's the value of this? 
Do we know? No. You slide C. I put one here. So this is one. Well, that's what they are saying. In this model. Yeah. In this model. Yeah. So, so the question is what in, what in this modeling is exactly. the values of yeah. these things? Yeah. But not what in general they could do. Yeah, but, I, but I, in order to solve this, I have to, uh, oh, you know, the scale the, yeah, I have to find the scale. So if I put a one here, so this is minus one, and this is one, so I found the scale. So this is what the teacher has to do, give activities for the students to play with this and find, you know, different things and, and so forth. So it's not... The, the, the idea is not to give everything to the kids. It was going to be like a filming that you, you're, you're watching this thing behaving, <coughs> not working, not being active in the process of finding things. That's what we have to do. So, uh, okay, I'm back. Just your argument is that uh, teachers should be using this and the old school paper, like calculations also. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Because the software is not giving you this. So what you have, what the teacher here has to do is to combine, know how to combine the computer and, you know, the pencil and paper. So are you arguing that basically you give the kids this tool and let the different groups of kids play with it? Play with it. And, yeah. and see what they come up with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and then talk, talk about it, what they came up with. What you do, why did you get it, right. you know, if you don't get it, you know, work with, the, with another colleague or, you know, yeah, yeah. this is dynamic okay. and... Yeah. No, we would say get it. I would say what did you do? What, what did you do with it? Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, he, 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 probably, he probably can solve some of the stuff and... By, by just guessing, uh, but I want to know the concept behind what <coughs> you, 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 you did. In a way, it's more interesting to know what, how different groups of kids went at it. Yeah. Right? Yes, yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. You change the dynamic of the classroom. I have to do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <coughs> I just want to add that, you know, there is a sort of a misconception that you know, when you're gonna you're using a computer, you just give the kids this stuff and they gonna do random stuff and, you know, and then you know they figure it out by themselves. All the but but that's not what good teachers do. What good teachers the way they use this uh, in a good way is to design activities that will make kids come across the interesting, important concept. So it's like it's playing with it, but it's playing in a sort of a a semi-structured way. So you say, okay, let's try, uh, you know, these parameters, or let's try to, you know, draw the most like weird curve. I mean, whatever it is. But it's not like let them, you know, just use it on their own. And uh, so this is has to be very articulated with, uh, you know, group work or interesting activities and interesting connections between paper and pencil and this and all of that. So, because one, one common criticism is that people say, oh, but you know, if you just play with this, it's, you're not going to learn it, which is true. But if, if it's a guided kind of play, but still with a lot of space for you to experiment and investigate and make connections with the traditional representations, then people, you know, they learn the traditional representations, but they, they also learn why the representations are like that, and why they are for, and you know why the formula is in a particular way, and all of that. So, going back to this, you know, this um, in our what I learned from the Apache teaching program of the the festival that we did last year, and still do, is. Uh, I'm not totally in agreement with what Paolo said, because in fact, uh, what they did 
get into it in this tool, particularly with others. Yeah. Because they basically got different tables of kids with different, each one got a function, each one got a role, so everybody got to participate. And they gave them something like this, crude, uh, paper, paper and stuff, this is the same thing. And they, and they let them do it, and let them figure out by themselves how to do it. And, Discussion, more like what you were suggesting to play around and see who comes up with what. Okay, so moving forward. So, what we're saying here that we need to change this, you know, curriculum activity that was developed for paints on paper to be able to do and explore things like uh, imagery, you know, animation, simulation, visualization, and so forth. So now we have this maker, maker movement. And the, the question is, where is the knowledge construction when you play with this? So um, you have, for example, very sophisticated machines like uh, you know, laser cutter, the, the 3D printer. And I'm going to play with the laser cutter that we have. Are, are you familiar with this? Anybody knows what I'm talking about? You have this machine that you know, has the laser here. Is cutting this board of uh, you know wood, plywood, and then after it's done, you know this is all thing already cut. It you take apart all the pieces, and then you assemble this you know this little box that works like that. Okay, so the kids receive this, and the activity was to you know, put together you know, an animal like or what a figure, in this case it was animals like this. And the question is, what kind of knowledge they use to do that? So what I'm asking now is to work like in here with another person. What <laughs> uh, Sophia. So figure out. So the, just yeah. one quick, uh, Clarification: The kids receive this base that Malinch was talking about on the left, and they had to design the stuff around it and make it like an animal based on that uh, standard base. Everybody gets. It. So, like, we have like you know ten minutes for you to figure out what kind of knowledge they use to do this. Should we should, like take it apart and then rebuild it? I don't think it can be easy to build it. Yeah, I don't think it can. Or if you can actually rebuild it. Yeah. I think we have to together. Just to analyze what kind yeah. of knowledge they use to mm -hmm. My immediate thought in terms of like multiple intelligences is this is like so totally spatial. Because you start yeah. as in like how can you configure thing, like and pieces and so that they work out in and then they design like everything yeah. to make yeah. things. Yeah, the same size, the same base. So this is all the same square thing. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, build uh, the name. But you can do research and find out what kind of head you want and which kind of design. But then they do the design the computer, they can do it together again. Can you join two D and you expect to see the group of to be stable? Like what six market and like the ones we do made by Stanford students, but we do it with high school students. Oh, I don't know how much knowledge. Yeah, like it's, it's not like they're like they're like cells. Yeah, it's like anatomy. Yeah, that's that's anatomy. Yeah, definitely like some sort of just spatial knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, take it, like, yeah. So, but the kids, um, they get the 
I wonder how we do the screws. No, they are. Uh, uh, they're not designed. Uh, they're not designed. So you have to learn balance. The head was too As far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they probably like, could. The two legs. Like, and then there's like this math icing like, measuring. Like, so as the space. So this looks like the. Uh, I wonder like, in what order they put the I wonder like in what order they put the hand. Imagine they started with like the frame. Yeah, I can just mark here. And like the head. Yeah. And they're like, well, we need something to extend it up. Yeah. 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 Yeah
like there's a difference between the intensity of the laser, <laughs> you know, so to make good. this uh, proportions. This is like kind of too big, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I, I think like I would use something like the thing which is sort of shown to figure out the angles and the sizes of stuff. Um, I think we said most of those things. Maybe one more thing is uh, sort of like a, a revision process, process. So they make something the first time and the legs don't quite line up right. They know <coughs> now that they have to align them so they have to go back to the next step. Okay. Um, one thing is to be able to, you know, to solve this problem. <coughs> things this is what they make a movement is doing could be cardboard could be wood could be other materials but um, one thing that's not happened is the relationship between what you do and you know what's in the curriculum and what's you know what the, 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 the child is, is learning and, and so forth so uh, Piaget talks about this difference between uh, you able to make something and comprehend whatever you have done. So one thing is to be able to make something. So you achieve something. You have a product. The other thing is to be able to comprehend or conceptualize what you actually have done. Because you know here. Once you, you have done this, this object, maybe uh, the child used some knowledge, some concept. But the first step is to be able to be aware. So this is another book that Piaget wrote. He wrote this book here, Make versus Comprehend. And another book is this grasp, grasp of Consciousness. So the first thing is to be able to be aware of the concept that's involved in this you know, in this product that you have done. And finally, to be able to conceptualize. And to conceptualize, you don't get it from the object. You need somebody to help you with the concept. The concept doesn't come from, from the doing. I don't know if you, you agree. You need, uh, you need uh, somebody to look at this object, to be aware of, you know, that you use scale, this and that. And then go one step further to be able to say which concept is involved in doing, in doing this product. And the concept needs to be worked by, by the teacher. So as uh, Professor Carnot always is saying, the most expensive part in everything that we are doing is the training of the teacher. I visit this school here in, uh, in Boston. It's totally full make uh, school very very interesting a lot of stuff happening there i ask them what are the big challenge problem difficulties they have is finding teachers to be able to work here once a teacher leaves takes a year or two years to train another teacher to be able to work in this school so uh, To conclude, doing all this stuff with computers, technology, and so forth can help. But you know, in order to understand, to be able to go and find the concepts and construct knowledge, you need somebody to help you. And it should be a very special situation in the sense that technology is integrated with curriculum, and you need to be able to you know, work on the concept and not do, doing the stuff and, and having this product and, and that's it. Okay, thank you very much.